Hi, I'm Yasmin and I'm the Commercial Director at Remarketing. So the sector has experienced some really tricky times over the past kind of 18 months. And whilst everybody's talking about the financial implications, you know, we can see that in the press, we can see the bigger organisations aren't doing as well. No one is talking about the impact on commercial teams. You know, it's not publicised how many people have been moved to the side or moved out and you know a lot of businesses are restructuring and resizing and you know marketing business development inside sales teams are really feeling the pressure right now of trying to perform trying to influence that top line um, and also keep their roles which uh, is something that we often shy away from but everybody wants to keep their role right so you know decisions are slow commitments are hard to pin down and these teams are under pressure And we have the benefit at Remarketing of working with these teams all the time. And so we want to provide some practical tips over the next few weeks on how to accelerate efforts to build the pipeline, to focus on differentiation and where to focus, you know, what kind of reporting is important to stakeholders and shareholders and what kinds of market insight can help you um, to look at your business and, and what you're focusing on right now. But we wanted to kick off with five practical things that our clients are doing right now as well, and things that we are doing also. And number one is kind of finding out what the strategic initiatives are within the business. So we have a lot of clients who are a bit bigger in size, and it means that our marketing teams are really far removed from what's going on further up in the organization and just making sure that you know what initiatives they're focusing on you know what they're looking at from a service or capability point of view how they're tracking their competitors which ones they're watching will mean that from a marketing perspective you can really align to that plan and also If you are part of crafting those things um, further up the chain, then question them, validate them, have a plan B, you know, focus on being able to adapt to the market. Nobody really knows how quick it's going to bounce back. You know, growth has been quite stable when you look at growth over the past 10 years, but we have seen nervousness and we have seen a slowdown. And so having a plan B, depending on how quickly that's going to pick up, is definitely something that's useful. We have seen a lot of clients who really feel like things are picking up Um, but in case they don't then it is good to make sure that you have a plan b for how you're going to manage that so number one is finding those strategic initiatives and aligning marketing to them and it sounds really basic but the amount of kind of marketing plans and you know channel plans that we review often lack you know the commercial objectives right at the top what are you trying to do from a pipeline point of view what are you trying to be seen for in the market how is your positioning you know, where does it need to change? How does it need to evolve? If you're backed by private equities, you get closer to exit. How do you add value along the way? It, they miss a lot of those kind of strategic initiatives. So being closer to them and understanding what those contingencies are is, is really good to just have awareness of. The second one is getting closer to the sales team. Now, this is a traditional kind of problem within marketing and sales than being closer aligned. Um, But, you know, which services are they focusing on? What outbound methods are they using? How can you support them to better leverage events? Events uh, have come back with a bang. You know, last year, lots of companies were focusing away from events because during COVID, you know, we realized that there were other things that you could do to generate leads. But people are going back to what they know and they're focusing more on them. We're also seeing clients focus more on webinars and just live environments where clients and prospects can engage Also thinking about how you can support in nurturing that pipeline. What materials do your sales team need? How do they need to, you know, what's their pipeline forecast look like? And how do you then need to front load marketing activity to try and generate leads quicker and to give them chance to convert? So those are just kind of quick tips on getting close to the sales team. But, you know, we've seen clients do workshops. You know, we've run them ourselves with clients where we understand the role of each sales and marketing and also how they can help and support each other. And it's really important right now so that you can see the link between lead, you know, qualified market and lead, how that goes through the funnel, what challenges come up, how competitors feed into that and what eventually enables you to win. The next one is thinking about auditing your channel plan. And what I mean by this is what channels are you working with? What's working, what isn't? 
and really focusing on those things that are going to enable you to track, measure performance, tell a story internally about what's working and also then build on that. Um, you know, when you find out what works for your business, although the buyers in this space are all the same, they do tend to see businesses and organizations differently, whether that's depending on the people they interact with, the size and scale, the capability mix, you know, they do see, see businesses differently. So I think really focusing on, you know, those buyers and how they interact with those channels is key. If your website needs work, now is the time to do it. We we speak to a lot of clients who don't want to spend three months building their website again or focusing on landing pages. And what we find is pushing digital activity or paid efforts to a website that is not optimized or doesn't perform well, you end up doing it twice. So just even if you can make Small amendments, you know, we use things where you can create landing pages, you don't have to use the website. So it might be that you look at alternatives, but really focusing in on is it call to action driven? Is it friendly from a user experience point of view? Is it well optimized? Are your competitors ranking for keywords that you aren't? Are they pushing paid activity towards their website? You know, all those kinds of things and really digging into those will mean that it could just be one lead that you miss. But as we know in the sector, that can make all the difference. So really just figuring out what those are. And and the next one, which ties really nicely into that, is thinking about targeted efforts. So I think in this space, because the tactics are usually quite traditional, account-based marketing is something that clients often feel scared about. They're like, oh gosh, we need an email marketing platform. We, We need a hub spot. We need to work out workflows. You know, it's this big complex thing, but you can start small. And even if you start with the one to few approach, you know, get a list of accounts from your sales team, a list of companies that they want to target, produce some content around those pain points of those companies, segment them into little groups, identify quick wins, you know, really focus in on those digital campaigns and those targeted efforts will mean that you can measure performance, you can track them, you can influence how marketing is performing against the sales pipeline and just means that you can start small and build your way up so that eventually, of course, the dream is to have, you know, workflows across prospects, customers, at every stage of the buyer journey. So really focusing on the digital campaigns and focusing on what those quick wins are as well from a targeted effort point of view. Pick where you want to start first. Is it your website and optimizing that? Is it pushing some campaigns on LinkedIn to just make sure that you are producing some targeted efforts? Is it focusing on events and doing a big campaign around generating meetings for your sales teams at events? Just focus on that is really important. And then the last one is just focusing on brand awareness and not forgetting about it. So as with any sector, uh, you know, when things start to you know, fall a little bit or we see things slipping, a lot of companies then move away from brand awareness. They don't want to invest in their brand, their positioning. They don't want to look at, you know, tactics like thought leadership and and PR because they think that it's not quick enough. The return isn't quick enough, but now is the time. You know, we're seeing mid-sized players, those specialists who have been really focused on what they're trying to do over the next couple of years and stay laser focused on their plan they're performing well right now compared to the bigger organizations they're usually more more meaningful in their approach they're usually a bit more connected to each other internally because they're smaller it's easier but there's a lot of noise right now and and we're looking at ai and we're experimenting and it's adding real value to our business in terms of what we're able to do and how we can focus more on the things that get our clients results and performance Um, But there is a lot of noise with it as well. And so differentiating, making sure your brand stands out, making sure you are really crystal clear on how you are different to competitors, making sure you are being positioned in the market for, you know, things that add credibility around your capabilities, your people, your technical experts, problem solving and positioning your brand around problem solving. Those things are really important. And we found that it makes all the difference when, you know, it might be a biotech organization or a pharma business is looking um, for the right organization to support them. So those are the five quick tips. And as I said, right at the beginning, there's a lot more content to come from our lovely team at Remarketing and our friends from the private equity world, from Molecule to Market. 
We're going to be producing content about leading teams through change, where to look when your business is top line is under pressure. And also, of course, practical marketing guides and tips and tricks. So stay tuned. But um, thank you for listening if you've got this far. And hopefully some of those things will help.